gilsonite from the Black Dragon Mine in the Uinta Basin in northeastern Utah was hauled south by wagons over Baxter Pass to Crevasse. Crevasse was a siding on the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad to load sheep and cattle 17 miles west of Grand Junction, Colorado and 9 miles east of the Utah state line. The name Crevasse could come from the break in the rock formation to the south into the Grand River Canyon of the 1800s, now called the Colorado River and Ruby Canyon near Crow's Bottom. Rail and lumber being unloaded at Crevasse was for the new construction a mile to the east where surveyors had already laid out the town and headed west with the new line. The Uinta Railway would be built to haul the Gilsonite and Mack, Colorado was growing rapidly. The south side of the depot was used by the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad for freight and passengers. The north side was used by the Uinta Railway where the narrow gauge rails and company buildings were constructed in 1904. The Uinta Hotel brought luxury to the desert for its upper level management and stockholders. The lobby was like a hunting lodge. The dining room was equally stylish with silver service on linen covered tables and electric lights overhead. In April of 1960 a fire started in the hotel and consuming the west wing and the center leaving only the east wing. These pictures are taken in January of 2012. The concrete blocks are mostly intact, the outside bench is gone. The original sidewalks are still in place. I am standing where the hotel lobby would be. The first Uinta locomotive was purchased in 1904 from the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad. A used 1880 narrow gauge Baldwin consolidation numbered 55 that was named Tamichi. This picture was taken a few years later of the same engine and shows the changes made to the front pilot. The old oil burning headlight was replaced with the new carbon arc headlight. The tall diamond stack was replaced with a short capped smokestack and the cab was also replaced. This is the transfer yard at Mac in 1925. The Uinta Railway narrow gauge flat cars loaded with gilsonite were positioned next to the Denver and Rio Grande large gauge box cars. The 150 to 200 pound bags were moved by hand onto the Denver and Rio Grande. On the left Engine number 11 is refilling at the water spout from the water tank above the six-sided pump house. This is the tallest building in Mac. One half mile west of Mac, you into Shea number one and the new pile driver are improving the supporting structure of Bridge Zero A on the East Salt Boys. These pictures are the same location in 2012, 100 years later. The highway bridge has replaced the wagon crossing on the Ocean to Ocean Highway, renamed the Midland Trail and changed again to Highway 6 and 50 as it is called today. Continuing west towards Clarkton, the rail bed can still be seen along the highway, crossing fields and open ground. October 1st, 1911, Sunday, midnight.
Fireman Payne and section hand Kipros are crushed as locomotive number 10 falls through the bridge 1A into West Salt Creek two miles west of Mac. High water had taken away support on the east end. Engineer lineman is also badly injured as the tender cars falls onto the engine's cab pinning him in chest deep water. The coupler had broken away saving the passengers from sure death. A broken leg and a dislocated shoulder, Lyman was able to get free with help. Full story on the next day's news with details from passengers. That was the accident that prompted the railway to build this pile driver and reinforce the large bridges. The pile driver was built at Achi, and Shea number one is supplying the steam needed to operate the hammer. These next pictures are 101 years later at West Salt Creek. The bridge is gone, but you can stand on the rail bed for a silent moment. Four miles west from Mac is Clarkton and the sugar beet field where a short siding allowed the gondolas to load. Here the conveyor is filling one of the cars. The Uinta rail bed was built on the abandoned Denver and Rio Grande narrow gauge bed out of Mac for four and a half miles, then turning north towards Raider. The old Denver and Rio Grande rail bed continued to Cisco and can still be seen across the desert into eastern Utah. We're going to backtrack here a few miles towards Mac to 8 Road turning left which would be north to S Road and then turn left continue till you leave all the farms behind. This five million dollar paving job continues on the Uinta narrow gauge rail bed till you get to Raider. Then the rail bed will be on the west side your left for another mile then pavement ends at Prairie Canyon. The Baxter Pass Road continues north covering sections of the way to Salt Wash Siding now called Sprague and then on to the Crow's Nest. Leaving Salt Wash Siding we will pass some corrals on the right. Looking north toward the book cliffs, the evening sun is beginning to set. The engineer and the fireman could see the crow's nest at milepost 17.5 in the distance, six miles away, about 20 minutes from this point. Rail car number 50 has stopped for passengers to take a photo. The large rocks near the bottom are in both pictures the trees are larger and the crows are still flying some 90 plus years later. I have positioned my vehicle on the old rail bed for my own photo. Continuing north leaving Crow's Nest you will enter the West Salt Creek Canyon and pass Cookie at milepost 18. The articulated number 50 stopped for a picture in 1939 my photo of the same location 73 years later. The town of Carbonera will be at milepost 20 and the mine is on the left side in the next narrow short canyon. Ronzio took a photo in 1959 showing the concrete block base of the coal tipple. My photo was after the pipeline removed the blocks and the cistern for the town's water. The mine is up the hill following the coal trail to the tailings pile. Now the county road is on private property as it enters the narrow canyon and continues for many miles past this point. The number 12 Baldwin consolidation stops on bridge 27A below at Chi for this photo moment. 
the remains are visible if you walk into the sagebrush and just have a short look around. On the far hillside, the two large rocks are still visible in both photos. One has broken in half, but is still easily found to help mark this site. goes on up over Baxter Pass. You can see it zigzagging up. There's a tower at the top and that's where the road drops in. <laughs> 